Okay, we have the one of the final 100-point derby prep races. It's the Bluegrass Stakes. It's a grade one. It's the 10th race on the Saturday card at Keeneland. It's running a mile and an eighth for three-year-olds. And this is a good one. This is a, this is a nice field. Um, we've got the coach taking another uh, <laughs> take, rolling the dice with C's the gray on a couple weeks rest. Uh, see if we can get another one in the Derby with Just Steel. Of course, we've got Doorknock, uh, who won the Remsen, as well as the Fountain of Youth in his return this year. Uh, Just a Touch, who was a pretty good second in the Gotham. Uh, the, the ubiquitous Kenny McPeak entry, Lat Long, uh, we've seen on the Derby Trail and has faced a lot of these in Maidens. Uh, Epic Ride, um, who's been very successful on the synthetic over at Turfway. Uh, Sierra Leone, of course, uh, who won the Risen Star on his return, and Encino, who won the John Battaglia on Synthetic, who has yet to try dirt. So there's a, there's a lot of talent in this field, and it's a pretty interesting race dynamic. Now, if we look at the shape of this race, we're going to go through them one at a time. Uh, Doorknock, as we mentioned, and you know, I'm sorry if it sounds uh, uh, no, ad nauseum for me, but uh, you know, Danny Gargan saying that this horse likes to wait for horses still gives me concern. Now, I think that's the reason more uh, more than likely that he will go to the lead. Now, they may try to rate him. If they do, uh, it, it, you know, if you get the feeling that Doorknock's going to rate, I would uh, downgrade his chances in this race because then he has to look other horses in the eye, and that may be a problem. Not sure yet. However, he also towers over this field pace fraction wise. So to me, his best bet would be to go to the lead and just outlast everybody. I think he has the capability to do that. In the Fountain of Youth, uh, he did display fractions that show me that while he wasn't tested a whole lot, if they ratchet things up a little bit, I think he can withstand it. Uh, however, he is going to get some challenges in this race, unlike the Fountain of Youth. And um, so uh, I think this horse on class and talent alone can stay in this race. I'm not sure, though, uh, he can hang on to win uh, in this one. There's just a lot of horses who are going to be pressing him. Chief among them is probably Epic Ride. Now, Epic Ride is a horse coming from synthetic and as a uh, Many of you know I love the synthetic to dirt angle. Now, in assessing this horse's chances, uh, the last race to Battaglia, he lost to Encino, and he did rate there, but he had been going on the front end on synthetic, which is a feather in his cap to be sure. The problem is that last time, uh, he did not take a step forward from the prior races. So he may have plateaued as far as what he can offer uh, ability-wise. However, being synthetic to dirt, he is going to run big. I'm very confident of that. And I don't expect him to be around late, but he is going to press Doorknock. And that's where his contribution to the race is essential here. Um, usually horses, you know, when they get off synthetic, it's like a holiday. It's like, hey, I can finally, you know, it's like running in water and then moving on to running on the beach. Um, and it, it's that same type of thing. So this is a quality horse. I just don't think pace-wise he's in the league with Doorknock to stick around. But I think he can press him. And that will set things up for runners coming from off the pace. So Epic Ride, if you want to keep him in there, if you think he's classy enough to hang in there, okay. Uh, but I don't think he can win this race based on the shape of it. Um, underneath, possibly but I don't think you're going to get a commensurate price. So Epic Ride, I'm going to let go. Uh, what do you do with good money? He ran that ridiculous uh, on the front end in the Tampa Derby, uh, those ridiculously Arctic fractions, slow to, um, upon slow. Uh, he's not good enough in this field. I don't really understand why he's here, except Chad Brown may be giving the owners the okie doke. Uh, he doesn't belong in this race, and he's an easy toss to me, particularly when you consider Chad Brown has another uh, quote-unquote rabbit in this race in Top Connor. So uh, 
I still don't understand what the strategy was behind the Tampa Derby. I really don't. You have to believe that Chad Brown was behind it. Uh, but anyway, regardless, good money, toss. Just a touch I'm going to let go for this one reason. He's going around two turns for the first time. And while he does have fractions pace-wise that tell me he can linger in this race, but they're around one turn. Haven't seen him do it around two turn. And I, I think it will be a tall order for him to chase and uh, deal with Doorknock and Epic Ride on the front end. That's really my only reason. I think he's a good horse. I think a move forward is certainly possible. Uh, but uh, I, 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 don't, I just don't think the shape of the race sets up well, particularly with all the other horses who want to be up near the lead. So I'm going to let him go, and I think the price will be a little short as well. Latlong uh, has been a horse who has faced a lot of these. He's faced Doorknock, he's faced Track Phantom, he's traced uh, Seize the Gray, and he's held his own with them. Uh, he in We haven't seen him since the LeCompte, where I thought he ran a really good race. Uh, he was pretty big off the bench, and it's logical to assume that another step forward is possible, uh, more so the fact that Kenny McPeak is putting him in this race. Uh, we know Kenny McPeak, you know, he's a hard boot Kentucky trainer. So Keeneland is a meet that he certainly relishes. And the fact that we haven't seen this one in a while has me to believe that you're going to get a nice price and this horse is going to run big. So lat long, probably more likely for under, but I think you need to include on the tickets. Top Connor is another Chad Brown, and this one certainly has quality, but uh, after one start going into a grade one, um, yes, we've seen him do it with Tuscan Gold and domestic product, and he's certainly capable. He looks to have a lot of ability. They paid a pretty penny for him uh, to move forward. But again, race shape-wise, big field, a lot of horses up near the lead. He certainly could rate mid-pack and uh, get up for underneath, very much like Tuscan Gold. But I don't think it's logical with all the heavy hitters in here that he would be able to get up and win this race. If you can get a decent price, I wouldn't talk you out of using him underneath, but I'm going to let him go. BU has shown some talent, uh, particularly at Saratoga. We might, uh, we thought that perhaps he might move forward from his initial maiden race, which was a pretty good one with Seize the Gray. Uh, but it hasn't happened. And he's been a disappointment, to say the least. Now, he just broke his maiden. And that, to me, is a big red flag, uh, uh, you know, and he did it around one turn. He has not followed the traditional Todd Pletcher progression, moving into two turns. Uh, to me, this is another Mike Rapoli throwing it against the wall and see if it sticks. Um, this horse may be improved second off. That's entirely possible, but take a look. His class rating is the same as his first race. So there's no improvement in between the two. And yes, he can move forward here, but you know the price is going to be short, and I don't want any part of him, so I'm, I'm tossing him. I got better, I, I got better chance to have uh, better value under in my tickets than BU, so I'm letting him go. Seize the gray, uh, you know, the coach is rolling the dice. Uh, this horse has been running well. I liked his start coming off the bench. He looked like a different horse. And I'm going to cut him some slack for running in the Jeff Ruby on synthetic. I didn't think he ran bad there either. Maybe it wasn't a surface he necessarily liked the best, but I still thought he ran a decent race. Now you've got the synthetic to dirt angle to work with. Third off the layoff, which is a good angle for the coach. Granted, it is on short rest, but... Again, a lot of these horses have been running all year, and this one's just come run a couple races. So uh, it, I think it's safe to say he might have a little bit in the tank. And let's not forget what Just Steel did last week when we thought that he needed a break. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Seize the Gray can run a good race here. I think underneath is probably more likely he needs a lot of things to go right. Uh, in particular, he needs the fractions to be a little soft, and I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, and so uh, I, I think he's kind of a second-tier three-year-old, uh, but in this race, uh, with, a, with a price, I think you can get him underneath. Mugatu is coming off synthetic as well. 
So let's use that synthetic to dirt angle again. And while he didn't run, he didn't have a lot of punch in the last races, he, he did close pretty well. So this could be a liberation for him as well, getting onto dirt. And I don't think he's fast enough, and I don't think he's good enough, but I do think that uh, moving to dirt, that he could very well get up into the exotics at a price. And that's what I'm looking for. So Mugatu we use underneath for some value. So now we come to the white meat in this race, uh, Sierra Leone and Encino. Now, one of the things that uh, is a little troubling, just a degree, is that you have two closers in the back as opposed to one. Now, Sierra Leone had that with Anna Marie in the Resin Star, and Anna Marie wasn't the uh, beneficiary of it. I don't think it mattered a whole lot. It can at times when you have a lot of horses in the back, but I'm not going to think it's too much of a worry here. Uh, Sierra Leone hasn't done anything wrong. The Risen Star, he closed into a soft pace, which really shows what kind of horse he is. Uh, and I think he's the horse to beat here, mainly because the race shape, there should be a significant amount of pace pressure for Doorknock. So it is conceivable you could have a repeat of the Remsen, that same type of scenario where Sierra Leone comes flying wide down the stretch. Uh, to me, though, he's going to have company with Encino. Encino, to me, is progressing well. His last race, uh, he took a big step forward, moving into graded stakes. Now he's moving on to dirt, which I think he should be able to handle. And again, you've got another synthetic to dirt angle with a horse who has upside. And, uh, you know, let's also remember that Chad Brown is not gearing Sierra Leone up for the bluegrass stakes, he's giving him up for the Kentucky Derby. So the end game is the third start off the layoff, not the second. Whereas I think Encino has to demonstrate something to get into the Derby. So I think Sierra Leone can certainly win this race. However, given uh, the way Chad Brown trains and the, given the fact that Encino is, uh, I think has a lot of upside, I think you have to consider them both uh, to be the primary win candidates in this race. Uh, so that's where I'm going. Uh, I think the race is going to set up for it. Now, if we look at our wagering strategy, I think Encino will be the value, and we'll go across with him. Now, the three primary, the three-pronged uh, wagers we want to make, the three horses are Dornock, Sierra Leone, and Encino. I think those are your three prime horses here. As I mentioned, I think Dornock has a little bit more running to do than perhaps Sierra Leone or Encino because he is going to have a lot of company on the front end. And I do think uh, particularly the, the one horse in here is kind of a rabbit Chad Brown's putting in. I'm not certain of that, but I just have a feeling. So we are going to go, uh, we're going to box Dornock and Sierra Leone. We're going to box Sierra Leone and Encino. And then we're going to key box uh, Sierra Leone on top with uh, Dornock and uh, Encino. You want to throw a 411 exacta box in there too, fine. Or you just want to go 41011 box the three of them, fine too. I'm just hedging a little bit. Uh, I just have a feeling that, that Dornock is, is uh, going to get softened up a little bit here and then may provide the opportunity for the closers to take them. So in the trifecta, we're going to go 10 on top with 411. And then we'll add in Seize the Gray, Mugatu, and Latlong to get underneath. So we'll go 10 with 411 with 3, 4, 7, 9, 11 in the trifecta. I think Sierra Leone is the horse to beat here, but I wouldn't be surprised if Encino uh, can get the job done. If Dorna can win this race withstanding what I th consider to be some significant pace pressure, he gets a major league upgrade for the Derby. But... To me, Sierra Leone's the horse to beat here.